Hello and thank you for tuning in into my presentation of Reactify, Reactive Programming of Wi-Fi Firmware on Mobile Devices. My name is Arthur Sterz, I'm a PhD student from Marburg, Germany. This paper is a collaboration between the Philips University and the Technical University of Darmstadt. First of all, let's answer the question why one would program the Wi-Fi firmware. Many applications exist that can improve user's network experience. For example, if you detect that the Wi-Fi channel is too crowded, it could be changed on the fly. Or switching from an access point based communication to a peer-to-peer -peer based communication could be implemented when appropriate. With programmable Wi-Fi firmware, even new applications can be realized. For example, neighbor discovery protocols or counting surrounding devices for estimating customers in a shop. As indicated by the figures on the right, all of the examples can improve power consumption and latency significantly when they are implemented on the Wi-Fi firmware and not in the kernel or user space. But as of today, it is way too difficult to do because the developers have to be experts in the target platform and the Wi-Fi domain. This is why we propose Reactify, a reactive language for programming the Wi-Fi firmware in an easy manner. Let's start with some design considerations and the implementation of Reactify. If we want to program the Wi-Fi firmware on smartphones, the following points have to be considered. Wi-Fi chips are only coprocessors, what means that they are pretty constrained. For example, they have very limited memory or missing support for concurrency and parallelization. But although they have constraints, Wi-Fi chips also offer great strengths like reducing power consumption. Rectify aims to make these constraints easy to use and to transparently deal with the weaknesses. However, basic Wi-Fi functionality has to be supported in any case. For example, the IEEE 802.11 standard requires an acknowledgement frame within 20 to 50 microseconds. So the language should not mess with such mandatory functionality. To achieve the goals, a domain-specific language is necessary. It should be data flow driven since networking is data and event driven by nature and it should abstract from the platform so that non-expert developers can use it. With these considerations in mind, this is the language we came up with. A Reactify program consists of a sequence of definitions denoted with the dot syntax. Each sequence is called a reactive and every reactive can be assigned to a variable using the val keyword. Rectify supports three basic functions, filter, map and fold. The functionality within these functions is implemented in a simplified version of C to abstract from the platform. To interact with the Wi-Fi firmware, sources and observes can be used. Sources define event triggers like incoming frames or timers and observes trigger actions in the firmware like sending a frame or switching the Wi-Fi channel. Now, as the basic syntax is explained, what does the code you see actually do? This is the code for counting surrounding devices, which is done using five reactives. The first one switches the channel every 10 milliseconds using a timer source and the switch channel observe. The second reactive gets all incoming frames in monitor mode, removes all non-management frames and returns only the source address of every frame. The next reactive fires an event every 200 milliseconds, which in turn triggers the execution of the two next reactives. Line 11 shows the first one, where the actual counting happens. When the timer event is triggered, the hash map is cleared, otherwise a new address is added and the size of the map is returned. Additionally, when the timer triggers, the number of addresses is sent to the kernel using the send to OS observe. After developers implement their applications using Rectify, how is it then compiled and deployed to the target platform? In general, this is a five-step process. First step, the developer implements the application using Rectify as shown in the slide before. From here, the Rectify compiler generates a data flow graph. As part of this step, the compiler performs type checks, while the C-like function bodies are ignored here. Additionally, the compiler analyzes the topological order of all reactives, memory requirements and conditions guarding each reactive for the next step of the compilation. Based on the data flow graph, the C-like function bodies and the analyzed information about memory topological order and guarding conditions, the platform-specific C code is compiled in the second step. 
During this compilation step, the compiler optimizes the scheduling and memory usage, which is only possible due to the language abstractions chosen for Rectify. As mentioned in the language design, Wi-Fi chips are not able to execute code concurrently, so the logically concurrent Rectify code has to be executed sequentially in C. So the compiler schedules the compile C function sequentially and reacts with the same conditions are grouped, so that on every event the conditions are only checked once. The next optimization is regarding memory usage. It was already mentioned that Wi-Fi chips have only limited memory available. So the compiler frees allocated memory as soon as it no longer needed, which means that as long as at least one reactive is referencing a variable, the corresponding memory is not freed. The last two steps are platform and target specific, so I'll only briefly highlight the steps required here. First, the C code has to be compiled to the target binary blob. In our case, it is specific for Broadcom Wi-Fi chips. The C compiler also performs its basic type checks and the C-like function bodies that are copied to the C code. After the compilation, the binary blob has to be deployed to the Wi-Fi chip. For this purpose, we implemented a new I.O. control channel. I.O. controls are commonly used for communication between the kernel and hardware components. The last step is to load the code so it can be executed. One of our goals was to preserve basic Wi-Fi functionality, which includes that active connections must not be disturbed, even not during loading Rectify programs. Therefore, we use position-independent code modules. The special feature here is that position-independent code modules can be loaded anywhere into memory. Function calls and other jumps are then performed relative to the loaded memory region. To achieve this, we alter the global offset table during loading the module into memory. Now that you know how to write, compile and deploy Rectify programs, it is time to talk about performance. One goal of Rectify was ease to use. So we implemented a file sharing use case similar to Apple AirDrop or Google Nearby, where a file is sent from sender to receiver in a local wireless network. The code you see here switches communication mode from access point to a peer-to-peer -peer based mode called TDLS by analyzing the signal strength of incoming packets at the receiver. If the receiver detects that the signal strength to the sender is stronger as to the access point they are both connected to, the connection will be changed to peer-to-peer -peer and vice versa. It's not important that you understand the code completely, but that you can see the, the data flow. It starts with incoming frames in monitor mode in the first line. As the frame is passed on, unimportant frames are filtered and the total number of incoming frames is counted. The signal strength comparison is done in the reactive in line 17 using the, the C-like syntax. And at the end, the observe call in line 35 notifies the Wi-Fi chip to set up TDLS or to turn it off. Let's compare this to the C equivalent. This is actually the same functionality but directly implemented in C. First thing to notice is that it is about 9 times more code. The next point, you can not really reason about data dependencies. The red arrows shall visualize references to the same memory, but it's really difficult to keep track here. Additionally, there's implicit global state, as you can tell by the four variables declared in the upper left corner. There's also explicit memory allocation, which has to be taken care of. The passing of Wi-Fi frames is done using bitwise shifts, so developers have to know how data is structured and the correct relative memory addresses. This is all done using Reactify. Besides the language properties, how does the generated C code perform? To analyze the performance, we executed a series of benchmarks, where we measured power consumption and latency on the Wi-Fi chip in kernel and in user space. The left figure shows the results of manually written C code, the right figure shows the results of the corresponding Rectify code. In this setup, two devices were side by side and sending 1 to 1000 pings per second. The plots show the receiver's power consumption handling the ping packets in one of the three environments. You can clearly see that the power requirements on the Wi-Fi chip are significantly lower regardless where the code was executed. However, what is special here is that Reactify does not contribute any overhead, so the efficiency of the Wi-Fi chip can be fully exploited even with an easy-to-use language like Reactify. 
When we look at the latency, it is pretty clear that the Wi-Fi chip handles ping significantly faster than the other modes. Additionally, the Wi-Fi chip handles the request always within 300 microseconds, whereas kernel and user space are way slower and very inconsistent. And again, Reactify does not introduce any latency overhead, making it really easy to leverage the benefits of the Wi-Fi chip using Reactify. The final tests we conducted were the local file sharing application I showed earlier. It is important to mention that this application is only possible to implement on the Wi-Fi chip because some of the required information like the signal strength by default is only available on the Wi-Fi chip. During the test, the sender and receiver were located nearby at the start and the end of the experiment. The furthest distance between sender and receiver was reached after about 25 seconds. The image in the top left corner shows the path the receiver of the file traveled. The results show three different plots. First, a purely access point based experiment where sender and receiver were connected to the access point the whole time. The green graph shows that the throughput was always between 16 and 8 megabit per second. The yellow plot shows the experiment where sender and receiver were connected directly the entire time without the involvement of the access point. As can be seen, when sender and receiver are nearby at the start and the end of the experiment, the throughput is almost 40 megabit per second. In the middle of the experiment, when the distance between sender and receiver is widest, the throughput drops to about 4 megabit per second. Finally, the blue plot shows the result of the presented Reactify code. You can see that when sender and receiver are nearby, similar throughput is achieved as in the PureTDLS mode, in the beginning and the end of the experiment. But when distance is maximized in the middle of the experiment, the connection mode switches to the access point and the throughput stays at the same level as during the purely access point ba based test. Let's conclude this talk. With Reactify, we demonstrated the positive effects of programming the Wi-Fi firmware. Power consumption, latency and throughput can be improved with an easy to use domain specific language. Additionally, with Reactify, the development of new applications and protocols is made possible. We demonstrate the value of supporting such programmability with a high-level data flow-driven programming model. Easiness of programming, improved design quality, 802.11 compliance and the transparent enforcement of memory and scheduling constraints at compile time. Of course, there is still room for further research. Applying the techniques to other technologies like Bluetooth or Zigbee could bring the benefits of Rectify to other areas of communication like Smart Home. Further, at the moment the user has to run potentially untrusted code. Introducing a sandbox could eliminate security and privacy issues. And finally, as of now, Rectify code has to be executed entirely on the Wi-Fi chip. Adding multi-tier capabilities and executing parts of the code on the Wi-Fi chip and parts in the kernel or user space could cope with the harsh constraints of the target platform. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to answer the questions during the Q&A.